This episode of Backpens and Beyond is brought to you by Max Steel Farm and Ranch Equipment. For full arenas, cattle handling and feeding equipment, front attachments, gates, and panels, contact Weston Barnes at 515-460-3669 or go to maxsteel.com to find a dealer near you. for the Backpens and Beyond Rodeo Network. My guest today was the 2016 PBR Rookie of the Year, the 2019 Mason Lowe Award winner for the highest mark ride of the PBR season, the youngest two-time PBR world champion, career earnings just over $4 million. He's buying lunch, and he has announced that he will set his sights on the world of pro rodeo for the 2025 season. My guest today from Volberg, Montana, Jess Lockwood. Jess, what's happening, young man? Not much. Just, uh, just trying to keep this place up and st- up and standing around here, Jake. <laughs> you love to hear it. So, uh, I worked for the PBR from 2017 to 2020, and that's when I got to know you. Um, and I got to see some really cool stuff. And the 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 bull rides that really stand out to me. I was there in Atlantic City when Cooper Davis rode Smooth Operator. Um, another one that was one of my favorites was Rubens Barbosa on Chiseled at the 2019 World Finals, which I'm not I'm not a bull riding expert, but I feel like that one's kind of underappreciated. But my two favorite bull rides, back to back weekends, the same guy, the same bull, about 2,400 miles apart. Of course, I'm talking Greensboro, North Carolina, in 2019. You pick Heartbreak Kid in the short round. He had like 38 straight buck offs. He was four shy of Bushwhacker's record. Okay, so you get on Heartbreak Kid in the short round at Greensboro, make a outstanding bull ride with an absolutely atrocious get off, 93 and three quarter points. The very next weekend in Nampa, Idaho, he has a little bit different trip this time. You know, the first time he switches directions on you, the second time you ride him, he stays around to the left. You strap him for 94 points step off and walk away like an absolute gangster talk about those two for me yeah just like you put it so that first time riding him uh that weekend i I rode both my bulls going into the short round and uh, my second bull on the weekend earlier that day same day i rode heartbreak kid he just kind of had an off out so i was sitting i think fifth or sixth going into that short round and i knew i had to be as many points as possible which i mean you're gonna pick the bull that you can do that on every single time and you never knew if he was going to have his rank but have just a miserable feel like you're tied to an anvil out of an airplane type out and so that's why kind of a lot of guys stayed away from him but i remember he had an outstanding out the night before with shay marks a canadian and going into that short round i'm like okay i've got to be this many points to jump up to first absolutely taking heartburn three bucked me off twice already and the last time this is kind of an insider deal uh secret so the last time i had got on that bull was february of that year and then i had got on him the summer before well the summer before the first time i got on him i slid up there just normal kind of got got my feet down got my seat and i took that bull and that bull after that him out that he feels for a rider so much definitely ones that are smarter than others and he was one of those bulls so when i chose him february in 2019 i told hd page hey this is what i think with him that he's so smart he feels for guys right away and that's why he has those bad outs every once in a while not bad outs but bucking hard and just kind of feeling around not turning back right away so i told h i was like i'm gonna jump him i'm gonna get stay back on my rope look around at you and say are you ready and if you say you're good to go, I'm going to nod from the flank and jump him as they open that gate so he doesn't have time to think. Well, I did that in Sacramento, California in February, and one of the best outs that bull ever had, right there to the right. He was out of a right-hand delivery that time and just bucking like hell. And 
then when I chose him in Greensboro, I told uh, HD the same thing. I'm like, hey, H, I'm going to jump him again because I'm fully convinced that this bull uh, just doesn't have time to think when I do that, and he's just going to have a good, honest out. Fuck like heck, but good, honest out. Well, sure enough, I did it, and he was as good as a guy could ask for both ways. And like you said, uh, I didn't really get to celebrate the first time riding him, which would have been awesome to celebrate a buck off streak like that, breaking it. But uh, I landed on my old brain bucket from about 10 feet in the air. (laughs) It stunned me pretty good. And as I got up, I called for the sports med guys because I was fully convinced that I broke my neck that I landed on it so hard. Man, it was it was it was ugly. It was hard to watch and it was a scary deal. But it was good to see you get up and still be able to walk out of the arena. But the next weekend, different story. Oh, yeah, that next weekend. It uh, same thing. Come around short round time, and I'm fifth or sixth or seventh or something in the middle there. And uh, I was honestly up on the shark cage. I kid you not. Another, you're getting a lot of inside deals on these. I love it. On these stories, Jake. I love so it. So I'm up on the shark cage with uh, my old my old agent now, Brandon Bates, who used to be the PBR announcer, you know. And he's like Jess Lockwood with the number whatever pick. What are you thinking? And he puts his microphone down, and he's like, "What are you gonna take?" And I'm I'm having a conversation with him up there i'm like dang brandon i don't know there's a cool customer that bull on uh, a bowl of hp pages that was so good and you could be 92 93 points on and i'm like i don't know brandon maybe cool customer either that or heartbreak kid and he looked at me he said you just rode that sucker last weekend why the hell wouldn't you take him again <laughs> i'm like all right heartbreak kid <laughs> and and that trip, I like that trip even better. He just stayed hooked up to the left, and I, I jumped him again like I did the time before. And this time, he was bucking so dang hard at that whistle. And it looks like in the video that I'm kind of spurring him the whole time. And insider story, that bull was bucking so hard and was so well put together, built, muscled up, that each time he'd hit and push with his front feet to go up in the air, I wasn't even spurring that bull. That was my feet blowing out of him each time because he was so muscled up and his muscles would tense up and blow my feet out of him. So the whole time it looks like I'm spurring the bull where really I'm just trying to keep up with that sucker. And at the very end, right at the whistle, I thought to myself, I've got to give him one. So I reached out and I just hit this sucker. And the way it all happened by doing that, I came off the side just enough and the whistle had already blown to where I just let me on my rope, and it slapped me right there on my feet next to him. <laughs> I went from the weekend before landing on my head, worst get off ever, to riding the bull the next weekend, same bull, ninety four points, and stepping off on my feet. And then, and then the excitement took over, built up from both weekends because I ran around that arena like a chicken with my head cut off hooping and hollering and i was i was actually worried in the interview after that ride that you were going to scream at kate harris you know and (laughs) matter of fact uh matter i'm sorry katie harrison but matter of fact after you got done with the interview i'm pretty sure the camera follows you after the interview and you scream at whoever is standing next to you but like you said you had two weekends worth of celebration built up and that was an incredible bull ride both weekends man i i appreciate that that's an awesome story but uh it's we're gonna go back a little and it's kind of hard to do but we're gonna try to summarize your career a little bit um with the pbr so you you're 18 in 2016 uh you you go to a velocity event in March of 2016 in Wheeling, West Virginia, and you win it, okay? So with that win, you were invited to, at that time, the Built Ford Tough Series event in Sioux Falls. You take seventh in Sioux Falls, and then two weeks later, you win Billings, Montana, which would you would consider kind of your hometown PBR event. And after that win in Billings, it's pretty much Katie bar the door from then on and, and you had arrived in the PBR. What was what was kind of that experience like in, in 2016 and, uh, you know, your first, you know, few months, weeks on tour? Yeah, that, uh, to put it into, like, a couple words, it was just, like, a dream. A dream and life-making. So 
I was so invested in the PBR growing up and even the year before I'd be at an amateur bull riding or an amateur rodeo and come home and Sunday I'd have that, uh, the, my dish network in my bedroom with mom and dad. Uh, I'd have it to record the PBR and I'd get back home one in the morning and throw the PBR on. So when I got on tour to see guys like Cooper Davis, JB Mooney, uh, Fabiano Vieira, Silvano Alves, all those guys that I watched growing up and was just, you know, watching the year before and just idolizing to get in the same locker room as them and then be able to, like, prove to myself and to them, like, hey, I ride bulls pretty dang good, and uh, they start noticing that. That was the coolest thing in the world to me. Then in, in 2016... This is kind of maybe a little foreshadowing of what's to come with your PBR career, but you make it to the world finals. Uh, you go on to win the rookie of the year in 2016, but you have, uh, you do it all with a broken finger on your riding hand. And, uh, but anyway, that's how your 2016 season comes to an end with the rookie of the year. Now going into the 2017 season, you start the season off in Madison Square Garden. You win the buck off at the Garden. How how do, how are you feeling going into that season after winning Rookie of the Year? Now you're going to win the first event of the season. What does that do to, to jumpstart that sort of that sophomore year for you? Yeah, that was huge, and it's crazy because the year before at the World Finals, I didn't ride a single bowl at the World Finals, and you know then the st- talk starts that you know maybe this kid isn't as good as we thought he was. But going into that next season, I felt like I had a lot more to prove and uh, started off with a bang there. And it's funny that uh, this is exactly what we're talking about because I go see a sports psychologist uh, slash therapist uh, one time a week, every single week nowadays. And we were actually talking about that type of thing this week. And I brought up the story of my 2016 season and 2017 season to him because kind of our talking point uh, this week in the therapy was a perfectionist versus an excellence. And I told him that that 2016 season, that's how I saw myself was a perfectionist. And a perfectionist is, is I didn't realize after, until he told me, like a perfectionist isn't a person you really want to be. Perfectionist is being right. Excellence is being willing to be wrong. Perfection is fear. Excellence is taking a risk. Perfection is doubt. Excellence is confidence. Perfection is the destination. Excellence is the journey. So it, that made me really realize this week the difference between my two seasons. And in 2016, I was a perfectionist. I was so focused on bull riding and bull riding only. I would get up at 5 a.m., work out, get my first workout in for the day. So around 5 that night, I'd do another workout. And during the day, it was all stretching, focusing on bull riding, watching rides drill like just focused and through that like I really realized that at the end of that season when you know it didn't go my way like wow there's a lot of fun that I left out there on the table I didn't hang out with buddies during the week I didn't you know I was too uptight and focused where I should have been hanging out and like just cutting loose not partying but cutting loose and just having fun I'm a freaking 18 year old kid well then 2017 rolls around and I, that, I told myself at the beginning of the year, one of my New Year's resolutions was just have fun. Like, like work out and do everything you need to do. But in the meantime, have fun. It's not, don't take it so serious. And that, if I could go back to one year in my whole career, it would be 2017. As a 19-year-old kid, I'm not out there partying or nothing, but just hanging out with friends. We'd go do dumb stuff, hang out, go to buddies' houses, just stay up all night just fooling around like we just cut loose and had so much fun that year and went to all the bull rides in the summer the lower level ones went to the calgary stampede that was the most fun i've ever had in my life that year and the end result resulted in a world championship Uh, and i fully believe it was because i cut loose had fun and wasn't so uptight and focused on bull riding that you gotta have that in life so the irony that you talk about how 2017 was the most fun you had on paper, you know, you had a good year. You, you win four events that year. You eventually go on to win the world title, but 
after that win in New York City, you have a groin injury in February in Kansas City. Then you go on uh, later in the year in September in Long Island. You break four ribs, have a punctured lung, a lacerated kidney. Um, so you, you sit out a lot of events that year. You still go on to, to win a world title. You say it was the most fun that you've had. You know What was it like to win the title that year? in spite of everything that you had been through. And then just on a side note, what does that kind of say about the sport in general that one year after winning the rookie of the year, you're the, you're now the world champion, but in the process you have had the absolute hell beat out of you. Yeah. This, uh, this sport's ruthless is the way I put it to everyone. Cause it don't, these bulls don't give a damn and no one gives a damn. If you're the best in the world, the worst thing can happen to you just as much as the best guy in the world as it could the next guy. And, you know, those injuries stack up and yeah, they're not fun. But like I had said to where, like if those injuries would have happened to me in 2016, Oh, I would have been, I would have been a grouchy little, no fun (laughs) bastard. Honestly, like I would have been at home just sulking in it, not having fun. But that year, 2017, each time I, you know, had an injury that set me back, I didn't let it get me down. I would go hang out at buddies' houses and do go to therapy, physical therapy, and get healed up. Like, to me, it was like, yeah, it sucks. I don't get to ride bulls now. But in the meantime, I have more time to hang out with my friends and goof off as a kid. So that's, I feel like, what kept my mindset so good that year is I wasn't at home sulking in disappointment and worrying about standings i was just like yeah screw it nothing i can do about it might as well go goof off and have fun with my buddies so you win the title in 2017 uh 2018 comes around you win four events that year you win the american uh you make just shy of three hundred thousand dollars in earnings but by your own admission before you know after hearing you talk uh you said that you kind of had a world title hangover in that 2018 season what had maybe changed a little bit uh in, in that time span you know like they warned me about it like justin mcbride warned me cody lambert warned me like don't get that world champion hangover and i all i could think when they told me that was like what the hell are you guys talking about like that's not possible i'm just my normal self but you know the season came around and coming off a world title just a few months before that and you know like Justin McBride once said, and I feel I felt the same way. After you win your first world title, that's all you've dreamed of your whole life. And then you think life's problems from winning that title, everything's just going to be easy going forward. Everything's life's problems aren't there anymore. It's just going to be everything solved. I got a world title. Well, that sure as hell don't happen. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> And it just going into that 2018 season, going through the whole season, it was just kind of, you know, kind of got a little too content with myself that I got a world title and kind of let up off of, uh, you know, the work and effort I put into it and just kind of laid back on that world title. Like, "Ah, I got a world title now. Like, I'll just have fun and, uh, like, be myself. But, no, that work don't stop. You need to bust your ass every single day if you're going to do this sport. And uh, I really didn't that year as much as I should have. So you talk about you know, being content after that, that title in 2017, uh, in 2019, you know, 2019 comes around, there is absolutely no evidence of complacency whatsoever. You are back with a vengeance. You win 14 regular season events that year, absolute savagery. Uh, you have that, those iconic matchups at the end of the season that we talked about with, uh, with heartbreak kid, but as many events as you won, and listen, I, I, I have not been involved with every single PBR World Finals, but I think not only was I invested in it, but every person that was in the building at the T-Mobile Arena on Championship Sunday in 2019 was bought in. Because going into that Championship Sunday, both you, Jose Vitor Leme, and Chase Outlaw, all three of you mathematically still had the potential to be PBR world champions at the end of the day. 
Uh, talk about how, how all that played out and, and how you'd eventually win your second world title and, and become the youngest two-time PBR world champion. Yeah, that, uh, that finals, and I, you know, I may be uh, a little biased, but to me, that's one of the closest races and one of the best races in PBR history. Um, going into that finals, you know, I knew I still had a shot. I didn't know exactly what it was going to be like. But, you know, Justin Felisco, the uh, guy that used to be the PBR rider, he, he, he's a big numbers guy. You know that much. And yeah. before the day before uh, PBR final starts, we do some interviews with Ty Murray and Justin McBride and all that and kind of have a media day. And uh, Felisco caught me while we were doing all that. And he said, do you know what you have to do to win the world this year? I said, no. He's like, do you want to? I was like, well, hell, I might as well have a goal. And uh, he said, you have to win the world finals and you have to, oh, what did he say? You have to uh, win the world finals pretty much. And so that meant not bucking off a bull in my mind. So going into that world finals, I knew, you know, if I buck off in the second round, world title's over. And I didn't let that, you know, scare me. I let it just, I let my uh, training, I let my mental focus, I just let it all take over to where I got in those bucket shoots. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Just stay calm and just let everything happen. You know, like God's got a plan. If this is his plan, then so be it. And if it's for me to buck off, that's, that's going to happen too. I can't control I can control what I can control and all the other stuff is going to fall where it will. But it was pretty amazing each night to, you know, get on a bull knowing that a world title is on the line. If I fall off, it's done and over with. And I just kept knocking out them bulls up until the very last one. Uh, That last one got me on the ground, but that's because I probably wasn't uh, as focused as I needed to be. Jose went before me in the short round and he bucked off. So that meant I had the world title wrapped up before I even got on my short round bull. And, uh, you know, I, I, I could ride that bull ten, nine times out of ten, and that's the one time he got me in the short round because at that point, I pre- like, yeah, I should have been focused and got the job done. But, hell, I just won a second world title. I wasn't worried about much. That And, and that world finals was so awesome. I remember every night it was just like, for me at least, it was like, okay, we get down, we get down to like the last five, you know, the top five guys in the world between you and Jose, yeah. just an absolute slug fest on who it was just perfect one upsmanship. And then you throw chase outlaw in the mix. Who's just awesome that it made for one of the most entertaining PBR world finals there were there there's ever been. And then, it, you know, you go on to win the world title in 2019, um, in 2020, I think, you know, at the finals in 2019, we kind of see the the arrival of Jose, you know, and he really solidifies yeah. himself as a player. Um, 2020, you end up fifth in the world, uh, but from then on, you know, the injuries start to kind of pile up. Um, at the end of the 2022 world finals, uh, you get drafted by the Oklahoma Freedom, and that doesn't entirely work out. Uh, you, you get picked up by Nashville. I know we're kind of jumping ahead, but kind of try to yeah. describe a little bit of what your experience was like in the, in the PBR teams world. So, yeah, like I was just banged up those last, these last few years, like the whole team series, the regular season, everything. Uh, so I did, I really didn't get to experience a whole lot of the team stuff. I, I tried riding earlier this year at a couple events and my hip was bothering me. And then from uh, from then on, just kind of took the time off and time to recover. And so, yeah, like these last three, four years uh, of PBR, you know, I haven't been very uh, involved just being hurt. And th- there was there's there was a good stretch there for oh, these last two, three years up until about three, four months ago. Like I wasn't living life very right. Like I was kind of in some dark spots. And eventually these last four months, like I got myself pulled out of that. And I'm so grateful for the unconditional love of my family and friends and just getting me back in a great mental state, a great physical state. And, you know, these last four months have been the greatest, greatest days, greatest months of my life. I feel like I feel better than I did in 2019 and 2020 when I was riding at my best these last four months. So, uh, I, I may not have been the 
Jess Lockwood, normal Jess Lockwood, that may not have been around these last two, three years, but I can damn sure promise you he is again now. And, and, and I love to hear that because the thing is, you know, you've been around since you were 18 years old. You're, you're almost a veteran of the sport, <laughs> but you're not that old. Like, how, how old are you? I just turned 27. Just turned 27. You still you still have got a lot of life left in you and a lot of bull riding left in you. And that's why I, as a rodeo fan, as a bull riding fan, and look, I, I love the PBR. I loved watching you in the PBR. But as most of the people who work for the PBR, they love pro rodeo as well. So when you, yeah. when you had announced that you were going to pursue – uh, a world title and professional rodeo. I was extremely excited. Can you talk a little bit about what sort of led to that decision for you? Yeah, to me, it was all I've done since I've turned 18 is PBRs. And that's been my whole career as, you know, a professional bull rider. And I know I still love riding bulls and still love the sport and all the work that I put into it. But to me, I honestly just got burnt out on these PBRs the last few years. And uh, it wouldn't matter if, you know, I went back to the PBR now that I'm feeling my normal self and got a mental clarity and great physical shape like I, uh, the best I've been in my life. It's it's still just I, – I needed a change up. Um, it's – to me, it's not the same PBR as it was five years ago. And – I just needed something different because I know I still love riding bulls. And for me, that decision was rodeo because you can go to the same PBR event and it's going to look the same. It might be a different stadium, but you know, you're in the same locker room with the same guys. You just go to a hotel, stay in the hotel all day, go to the bull ride and go back to the hotel, fly home. It's all just the same routine and the arenas look the same, same setup, you know, nothing really changes. And I just needed a big change up because I still love riding bulls so much and I'm excited to go to rodeos and, you know, just get in a different atmosphere and around a lot of those guys that I'm buddies with that I don't get to see very much. You know, they say rodeo pro rodeo is a grind. It's miles on the road. It's flying. It's a ton of travel, but the PBR, you know, the PBR is a lot of travel too. And at the beginning, you know, when I first became involved, I thought, well, how hard can that be? You know, you sit in an airport, you get on a plane, you fly, you're not, you're not really driving all that much. It is a grind. So f- to me, it sounds like this is just a matter of choosing which grind you want to be a part of. And right now it sounds like you kind of want to get, get out and enjoy some scenery. Absolutely. Yeah. That P- PBR is a grind. And what people don't understand, I feel like, the, yes, rodeo is a grind. You're going to get on a lot more bulls, uh, kind of. But at the same time, with PBRs, you're getting on every weekend, and you're not getting on just, you know, good bulls. You're getting on the best bulls in the world every single weekend, and then in the short round, you're getting on the best top top 10, top 15 bulls in the world every weekend. So you – and you do see some of those bulls at pro rodeos, but here's the thing. You're going to see them, you know, one every 10 rodeos or something, maybe even one every 15 rodeos. You're not getting on – four or five of the best damn bulls in the world every single weekend and that takes a toll on a guy's body i tell you um where rodeo you're gonna get on good bulls but you're gonna get on a lot you know nicer brighter friendly bulls and you're gonna just have a a greater lifespan in a rodeo world so just to sort of clear the air i guess a little bit some people see these two organizations the the pbr and the prca and see them as competitors i think you know people in pro rodeo enjoy the pbr and respect what it's done for the industry people in the pbr most of them come from a rodeo background and are fans of pro rodeo so sort of to clear the air you know you're going to have outsiders that say well he was pissed off at the pbr and this and that is there any are there any hard feelings between yourself and the organization as a whole or is this just the, the decision that you felt was the best for you. Yeah. To me, it's the decision that's best for me there. I have no hard feelings for the PBR at all. You know, they've everything I have in my life, I got from the PBR. Um, and you know, I still have money coming from my world titles from the PBR, 
without the PBR, I'd have nothing that I do in this life. So I'm so grateful for the association, so grateful for the people, the opportunities that it gave me. Um, you know, just just Lock was wouldn't be just Lock with the Bull Rider without the PBR. So I'm forever grateful to them. And that's great to hear. And, and moving forward in the world of pro rodeo, is there are there any rodeos or any experiences? Uh, specifically that, that you're really looking forward to as you sort of open up this new chapter of your career? Yeah. So, uh, so since this is my first year of pro rodeo, I'm not technically qualified for, you know, like all these big winter rodeos coming up. But the way it works is if, you know, come December time, if you're in the top five in the world and uh, you're not invited to those rodeos yet, you get invited to those rodeos. And, you know, if there's guys that are already invited to those rodeos in first through third place and then, say, I'm seventh place, uh, they skip over that and take the top five that aren't already invited to these winter rodeos. So I am so looking forward to hopefully being in top five position and going to Fort Worth, going to San Antonio, going to Houston is a huge one that I'm looking forward to big time. Those type rodeos in the uh, wintertime, I seriously cannot wait to roll my bag into uh, NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. So to finish it out, are you are you just give us a little uh, insight on your strategy? Are you going to kind of be choosy where you enter, or are you going to hit that super slab and, and go on that full on pro rodeo grind? So you know, I don't uh, I don't put it off that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but uh, I do <laughs> I do got a little brain behind me. So I have actually uh, Cody Wright is uh, entering me in rodeos. That's who I have hired to do all the entering for me, pick and choose the rodeos for me, and you know, hell, he does it for Stetson. So that just speaks for itself. You know, Stetson isn't off at little thousand added added pro rodeos. You know, picking at the pot. He's showing up where it counts and making it, uh, making it count where it counts. So that's what uh, Cody's going to do for me is take the stress away of entering and figuring out where to go, and he's going to do all that for me and just make it easy. I just got to show up and ride my bulls easy enough, right? That is an unbelievable interview. Uh, your two-time PBR world champion, uh, 2016 Rookie of the Year, Jess Lockwood getting ready to hit the pro rodeo trail man thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me I really appreciate it and I'm, I'm looking forward to see what's in store for you thank you for having me Jake this was freaking awesome appreciate you dude